As a child neurologist, I was devastated to see children having difficult neurological problems without any understanding of what causes them. So one particular problem I encountered is children with Rett syndrome, particularly girls with Rett syndrome. And it was devastating to see these girls being born healthy and then gradually lose all their abilities. And having seen so many of these girls and they all looked similar, although they were one in a family each, I thought this has to be a genetic disorder. And the challenge I set out to do is find the gene for Rett syndrome. The gene for Rett syndrome has had really broad impact. For one, on the disease itself, because now you can make a diagnosis very early. So girls are being diagnosed at the age of year and a half, two years, two and a half years. And why is that important? It spares them a lot of tests, but also it allows early intervention with physical therapy, occupational therapy. So that's from the practical point for the patients right away. For the disease itself, beyond early diagnosis, it really provided a path forward for us to understand it and for us to really one day develop therapies. But beyond Rett syndrome, Rett is a rare disease, but it is striking how much we learned about the broader, more common diseases from the discovery of Rett. And since the gene discovery, many others have now tested this idea in various types of uh, childhood disorders. And now we know majority of autism and intellectual disability are caused by mutations or deletions in genes or even duplications. And last but not least, we also learn about the importance of protein levels. This protein is really critical for brain function. So having too little of it will give you Rett syndrome, but we also learn that doubling it causes another neurologic syndrome we refer to as the MACP2 duplication syndrome, so we're studying that disease now. So many problems that affect so many human beings are captured in one that one disease. So by actually studying this protein and what does it do in every type of neurons, you begin to gain insight about some other behaviors seen in autism and Parkinson and dystonia and other psychiatric diseases. You know, having a child with severe disability, having a child that you love and adore so much, but they can't communicate back to you, I can imagine how painful that is, but the parents do it with grace. They cheer us on. You know, I went through a huge dry spell. Looking for a gene for 16 years, you can imagine it's failure after failure after failure. But really what kept me going is thinking of the girls, thinking of the patients, and the encouragement I got from many of the parents. So I owe them a lot of gratitude.